Good morning, my friends. Today's Sunday Fun Day is gonna be extra special and extra fun because in today's video, I'm gonna be harvesting mason bee cocoons. Yes, you heard me right. I'm gonna be collecting and taking care of baby bees. <laughs> okay, so in case you're wondering why on earth would anyone want to encourage bees to nest in your garden? Well, for one, these bees don't sting. In fact, you can actually pet them. And for two, they pollinate way better than honeybees do. So they're so good for the garden. But the best reason of all, they're so much fun to watch. So if you've never had any mason bees in your garden, I highly recommend it. Okay, so let me just show you and I'll explain as I go along. So this is the house where my bees come to build their nests and lay their eggs in these long hollow tubes. Unlike the honeybees that build hives and produce honey, mason bees are solitary bees that work alone. However, they are perfectly happy making nests right next to each other. And since solitary bees don't have to defend a hive or a queen, they are very gentle bees and they rarely sting, making them perfectly safe around kids and pets. In fact, most mason bees don't even have stingers, just about 30% and that would be the females. And even the females with stingers, they're not going to sting you on purpose, only if they're being smashed or directly hurt. So if you've noticed in the pictures, there are many different colored mason bees. In fact, there are about 139 different species in North America alone. But we'll save all that for another video. The most common mason bee in my area are the Blue Orchard Mason Bee. The name definitely speaks for itself. And also, the Red Hornface Mason Bee but they all have one thing in common. They are excellent pollinators. In fact, mason bees are better pollinators than honey bees. I know that may come as a surprise to you, but it's true. And the reason is, mason bees are extremely clumsy. Instead of landing on a flower, they will actually do a belly flop on a flower, which gets pollen all over their hairy bodies whereas a honeybee only collects pollen on their back legs. This enables mason bees to pollinate 95% of the flowers they visit versus 5% for the honeybees. Now I will take my bee house down and harvest all the cocoons I find inside the tubes. And in case you're wondering why I would do this, well, that's a very good question and I am happy to explain. Harvesting mason bee cocoons is very important because pests build up within the holes. If you don't separate the good guys from the bad guys, well, the bad ones eventually win out and the poor bees suffer. So what about all the mason bees out in the wild? There aren't humans harvesting the cocoons, yet the population continues. Well, yes, that is true, but now there are many more pests that have come from other countries like the Houdini fly. So these poor bees need a little extra help. Just like we plant native milkweed to help save the monarch population. By rescuing the mason bee cocoons from pests inside the tubes, gives the baby bees a better fighting chance to hatch in a more clean and pest-free environment. Because it's a little windy out, I'm gonna do all my harvesting inside this little box top, just so nothing blows away. Now I'm gonna unwind and peel apart the white paper tube, and the mason bee cocoons should just miraculously fall out. Well, as you are about to see, that didn't happen for me. Why? I never should have used paper tubes. I read an article that said they were very, very bad because the pests can inject their larvae in the mason bees through the thin paper. But you know, I'm the type of person that doesn't always believe what I read. I always have to try something. Well, that's how I learned. It was a bad mistake. Never use white paper tubes.
So overall, if I'm lucky, maybe I got a couple good viable cocoons. But in my opinion, this was a big fail. And because I failed, I wasn't even going to post this video. But then I was thinking, even if it means just one person might learn something from my mistake, well then I guess it'll be worth it to share. So, what are the best nesting materials to use for mason bees? Well, that's easy. Either blocks or hollow reeds. It lessens the chance of any pests getting inside. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned from my mistakes. Thanks for watching.